Eisenhower and Admiral Sir Andrew Brown Cunningham aboard the Royal Navy's cruiser HMS Aurora, one of the fleet of four cruisers and 12 destroyers which helped the Allied Air Forces pound the last breath of resistance out of the Italian island base of Pantelleria, forcing its unconditional surrender. The fleet opens up. Shells from a few remaining shore batteries miss their targets as the bombardment continues. Landing barges with infantry forces shove off for the island's beaches. Under attack from Nazi dive bombers, the fleet sends up a smoke screen and keeps on firing. Now the occupation troops move in. Despite the island garrison surrender, the operation may be subject to Axis air attack. Landing is accomplished smoothly and efficiently. Overhead fly some planes of the American Strategic Air Force that brought about surrender. Fires caused by their bombs and by the British Navy's shelling still rage on the island as the Armada reaches shore. Newsreel war correspondent who made these pictures reports that never before in England or in Africa had he seen such concentrated damage as was done by this record bombing. Not a house nor a building is left untouched. A few whose outside walls still stand are gutted inside. Italians liberated rather than conquered appear to be pleased with this big step on the road to victory. American bombers carrying out final pre-invasion air assaults on Sicily wing over the Mediterranean from North Africa to strike the main Axis fighter base at San Gerbini. Already in furious mass raids, thousands upon thousands of tons of bombs have hurtled down from Allied warplanes to explode on the airdromes, shipping centers, and military installations of this last vital stepping stone of the European continent. Now, as filmed by the Army Air Forces, a knockout punch. On the port of Messina at Sicily's northeast tip, less than three miles from Italy itself, more bombs fall. They smash docks and shipping facilities. Bombs set off the minefields in the waters of the harbor. In Algiers Harbor, a flotilla of great and small ships loads American men and weapons for the attack on Sicily. It is part of the largest invasion armada the world has ever seen. The DC-3s come in above the enemy airdrome. These are the most sensational pictures of parachute tactics ever released. This is a sight to thrill every American. This is your army. Begun in darkness, continue at dawn on the South Sicilian coast near Jela. The great combined operations have come to a climax. Barges swarm in toward shore from the big ships loaded down with troops, navigated by junior officers and men of the Navy and Coast Guard, specially trained in combat handling of small craft.
own sea eyes, made in America and sailed across under their own power, let down their landing ramps. Infantrymen churned through the surf into shore. storm a settlement above the beach. They're not just playing. motor equipment rolls ashore. Off the east coast of Sicily, part of the great Allied fleet bringing the British 8th Army on its invasion mission undergoes a stiff enemy air attack. streams inland, heading for initial objectives at Rossellini and Avala. In the Allied invasion plan, Americans take the left flank, Canadians the center, and British the right. At Jela itself, primary objective of the American attack, more landings are effected as troops already ashore fight their way into the town. General Patton, accompanied by his famous pearl-handled 45, goes over the side of his ship to take personal command of repulsing Axis counterattacks at Jela. Fighting in this area was bitter before the Americans finally broke through to swing far to the north and west. The town cleared, its native Sicilian populace, among whom almost every family has a relative in America, cheerfully greets the liberating Yanks. Continually moving ahead, American forces surge along roads in the interior past bodies of Axis dead. Men who find in the dry dust of Sicily the culmination of the Nazi fascist dream of conquest. Enemy guns and vehicles lie shattered too. Town after town falls as the first few days of the invasion become a week and more. Under General Eisenhower, with the valiant Canadians and the indomitable British Eighth Army as comrades in invasion, U.S. fighting forces have now met their most crucial test in this war to date and have scored their greatest success.